The year waves came in when we sang your sweet like chocolate boy without shame. Everyone had a method for taming even the most rebellious head of pepper grains into slick, crazy paved deference to R&B stars who loomed large from hoardings, pasted into diaries and exercise books, their lyrics written out on the backs of hands. We wanted to be wanted like that. So we slept with our mother's head wraps tight round our heads to keep the facade in place. Some learned the grace of clippers, the better to keep their edges in check. Others would get the barber to shape them up with a razor blade so that the skin stung and the stubble stayed hidden. But for all we tried to hide our natural hair, it came back rising unbidden from our scalps, as if each follicle knew that soon we would covet shaved lines in sideburns, eyebrows, anything to set ourselves apart, betray our roots. To be subjects somewhere, we waited in the shadow of municipal buildings that we might learn a mania for cues, each of us with a story, and those behind glass, the harshest critics, who have forgotten what it takes to make the worst days of your life catchy, a tune children might sing. To be subjects somewhere, we shortened our names, or better still, changed them wholesale. Kiki for Christabel, Victor for Wojtek. The histories we carried given over like passports of lesser standing, until we didn't know memory from myth, and no one lived who could say. To be subjects somewhere, we stood out of place, so long we dreamed of going back to where our names were not some bitter herb added to the local cuisine, to where people did not watch us with suspicion, as if jeans could hold a flag. Once, I held friends' phone numbers in my head like songs I'd known all my life. It's not the conversation I best remember, but the digits on my tongue as I said the spell to myself, the different tones when I pressed each key a particular music. It was all timing. Get it wrong and you'd be stuck with someone's rebellious sibling pretending to be them or Worse yet, a disapproving parent who wasn't quite sure you were the right type of friend. Then came the days of SMS, and voice gave way to text, gave way to elevated breath in the wake of telephone conversation. Clumsy now since we'd fallen out of practice. Before the age of digital natives, a nation of people looking down at screens, Elders say we were beings of speech, the real thing. But maybe some part of us craves this solitude. For all I miss the rattle of phone box coin slots. For all I lament the end of conversation. I knew all along it was over as soon as it began. Given all these ways we invented for talking to someone who isn't there the way I am talking to you now. The doppelganger arrived in the small hours with a suitcase of clothes identical to mine down to the last crease and palm oil stain. The Institute is meticulous about such things. A team of techno detectives have condensed my digital footprint into the perfect wallet litter. Train tickets, 
a Polaroid taken on the day of my graduation, a receipt from the Museo Nacional de Anthropologia's gift shop. Every detail fits my natural inclinations. Still something sticks and here the doppelganger is to divine the finer points of my ontology. We begin with the day burial fell into hearing, a side street in Newcastle, headphones itching the skin of my ears. He has a lot of questions I cannot answer in any language I speak. After several weeks, the doppelganger leaves to complete his mission. He stands in for me with such fidelity I have at times slipped and started thinking we are one and the same. Some days it is hard to know who imitates who. If after all I am not the sum of my habits, but a mass of tangled possibilities, then maybe I am pretending to be him, pretending to be me. Thank you.